Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at some forced oscillators and the exponential response formula. And the problem we're going to take a look at is first for part one to consider the equation x dot dot plus 8x equals and then a forcing term on the right hand side cosine omega t. And we're going to consider the case when omega squared is not equal to 8. So uh, in, term, in the language of resonance, we're not on resonance. And we're also asked, why is this called an undamped force oscillator? And then for part two, uh, to use the ERF to solve the differential equation x dot dot plus 2x dot plus 4x equals cosine 3t. And then what is the natural angular frequency of this differential equation? So I'll let you uh, take a look at these problems and try them out for yourself. And I'll be back in a moment. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so we're asked to find the general solution to the differential equation x dot dot plus 8x dot, sorry, plus 8x equals cosine omega t. And notice how this is a differential equation with constant coefficients, but it's being forced by, by a periodic function on the right-hand side. So the first thing to do is to write down the, the homogeneous uh, solution. So the homogeneous solution, which I'll denote with a subscript h, solves the differential equation with the right-hand side of 0. This gives us a characteristic uh, polynomial of s squared plus 8 equals 0, which then gives us roots of plus or minus root 8i. So the homogeneous solution is some constant c1. And when we have imaginary, purely imaginary roots, we have cosine of the imaginary term times t plus some constant c2 times sine of the imaginary term, which in this case is root 8t. So the general, or sorry, the homogeneous solution always contains two constants. And it solves the differential equation with the 0 right-hand side. The general solution, however, is the homogeneous solution plus one particular solution that solves the differential equation x dot dot plus 8x equals cosine omega t. So we just need to find one solution to this differential equation. And in this case, I'll use the exponential response formula. But first note that when we use the exponential response formula, we need a forcing to be of the form e to the st on the right-hand side. And cosine omega t is not in that form. However, what we can do is there's a trick to complexify the right-hand side. So we note that cosine omega t is actually the real part of i omega t. So what this means is if we have a solution, a complex solution, z, which solves z dot dot plus 8z equals e to the i omega t, then we can take x equals the real part of z, then solves the differential equation x dot dot plus 8x equals the real part of the right-hand side, cosine omega t. And now we're in business, because this equation has the form uh, where we can use the exponential response formula. So solving this differential equation for z, we have a particular solution for z is going to be e to the i omega t divided by the characteristic polynomial evaluated at the exponential. So in this case, the exponential is i omega. So we must evaluate the polynomial at i omega. 
And this is the solution provided that the polynomial evaluated at i omega doesn't vanish. And in our case, the characteristic polynomial p of s, we worked out already to be s squared plus 8. So this gives us a particular solution for z, which is 1 divided by i omega squared plus 8 on the denominator. We have e to the i omega on the numerator. And of course, 1 over uh, i omega squared plus 8 becomes 1 over 8 minus omega squared. And we know we don't have a problem because omega, we were told in the problem, is not equal to, equal to the square root of 8. So in this case, we know that the denominator is not going to vanish. Okay, And now what we need to do is just take x for the particular solution to be the real part of z, which is going to be the real part, I'll write it out, 8 minus omega squared cosine omega t plus i sine omega t which gives us 1 over 8 minus omega squared cosine omega t. OK, so the total solution, the general solution, is going to be the sum of the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. And in our case, that's going to be c1 cosine omega t plus c2 sine omega t plus 1 over 8 minus omega squared cosine omega t. Sorry. These should be root 8s. So this is the homogeneous part. And this is the particular solution. And this is the general solution. So we were asked also, why is this sometimes called an undamped forced oscillator? Well, it's undamped because in the differential equation, there was no damping term. There was no term proportional to x dot. And then secondly, it's forced because we have a forcing on the right-hand side. We have an input function, f, which in this case is cosine omega t, which doesn't depend on x. And that forces the differential equation. Also note that the forcing term gives rise to part of the solution, which is directly proportional uh, to uh, the forcing. In fact, it has the same frequency, but a different amplitude. OK, so this concludes part A. Now for part B, we're asked uh, to use the ERF to solve the differential equation x dot dot plus 2x dot plus 4x equals cosine 3t. And again, we can use the same trick. The right-hand side isn't of the form e to the i t, or sorry, e to the i 3t. But what we can do is we can write cosine 3t as the real part of e to the i 3t and then solve the differential equation z dot dot plus 2z dot plus 4z equals e to the i 3t, and then take, uh, take x equals the real part of z. And in this case, we're only looking for a particular solution. Which we can compute using the ERF. So it's 1 over the characteristic polynomial evaluated at 3i 
times e to the i3t. And what's the characteristic polynomial of this differential equation? Well, p of s is going to be s squared plus 2s plus 4, which means that p of 3i is going to be 3i squared plus 2 times 3i plus 4, which gives us negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5 plus 6i. And putting the pieces together, we end up getting that x is equal to the real part of 1 over negative 5 plus 6i e to the i 3t. And we can, expand, we can expand out the numerator using Euler's formula to get cosine 3t plus i sine 3t. And when the dust settles, I get 1 over 61. Let me check my notes. Minus 5 cosine 3t plus 6 sine 3t. So I'll let you work out this last step for yourself. OK. And then lastly, what is the natural angular frequency of the differential equation? Well, this is just some notation. We sometimes call the natural angular frequency uh, to be the square root of the term proportional to x. So in this case, the term 2 here uh, comes in as a damping term. The natural frequency, which is sometimes written as omega naught squared, is always equal to this term, which is 4. So the natural frequency, the natural angular frequency omega naught, would be the square root of 4, which would be 2. OK, so I'd just like to quickly recap. We've taken a look at forced oscillators, and we've computed their solutions using the ERF. And one common trend, uh, particularly when we have an oscillating uh, input, a forcing term, is to first change the oscillating term into a uh, complex exponential, then compute uh, a particular solution using the ERF formula, and then take the real part of the, the ERF solution to recover a real solution to the ODE. That gives us the particular solution. And then in some cases, we also have to add the homogeneous solution to it to get the full general solution to the ODE. OK, so I'd like to conclude here, and I'll see you next time.